Welcome back to another lesson and this one is all about uh, the sound, how to get that rockabilly sound because I got so many mails and uh, messages, you know, what kind of strings do you use, um, what model guitar is that, what amp are you using on stage, um, what is the setup, how do you get the sound, so I thought it's best to just do a lesson about uh, how I think you can get the rockabilly sound. And, uh, when I say rockabilly sound, I mean rockabilly rock and roll of the 1950s. I'm not talking about Brian Setzer, or the Stray Cats, or any other neo rockabilly band because I'm not an expert on that at all. Yeah, just talking about the 1950s uh, rock and roll rockabilly. First, I got to say it takes more than just one ingredient to get a good sound. It's not just the guitar or the amplifier. The main thing that is you and your playing. That's 70 to 80 percent. Um, of the sound yeah? and the rest is up to the equipment. I learned that with my first band, the Crazy Boys, that was in 1994, uh, we made some demo recordings at home and we were not very sat uh, satisfied with them. Sounded a little bit too modern, you know, so we thought, well, we go up to Sweden to Tea Records because last strand time and uh, he had all the stuff, you know, the, all the mics and the compressors, the tape machines, everything you want, you know. So um, we went up there, did some recordings, and uh, it pretty much sounded the same, you know. I mean, it sounded better, but still not 50s. So I thought, oh, what a bummer. And maybe it's not the equipment, you know, maybe it's us and uh, our playing. And. Uh, that's the truth, you know, and I know some of you are still skeptical about, about you know, what I just said and think, well, you know, the guitar or the amplifier got to uh, play a bigger part than just 20 or 30 percent. So let's have an experiment here. Um, I'm playing the solo out of Mama's Little Baby by Junior Thompson, and I'm using my Guild and uh, my um, GA70 kind of amp. I built it myself, but it's... Um, a GA70 schematic in there, um, and um, let me just start the um, backup track. And uh, most of you will agree, uh, well, the sound is pretty. 1950s rockabilly and you say well of course you play the guild and uh, you play the 50s kind of amp well I, I kind of fooled you um, here's the original footage for you So it was done with a like a BC Rich guitar, and this is my my basking amp, yeah, my solo PV solo. It's a battery amp, transistor of course, solid state, and it still sounded pretty cool, I think. Well, pretty amazing, isn't it? And I guess I look kind of funny too with that uh, black heavy metal guitar. Um, so why even bother taking that old, you know, 50s guild on the road? Uh, first reason, it just feels better, you know, for me. It's the same reason I don't wear jeans on stage, because I just feel better in, in slacks and a nice shirt. So, um, and if I feel good, I, I play better. Well, it's very simple. Um, even the Telecaster, because I'm very tall, you know, it always feels like a, like a mandolin. To, in my hands, you know, and it looks like it too. So, um, I just that's my f favorite instrument, you know, going on the road. Um, and of course, there are differences in the sound, you know. If I play the same lick uh, with this guitar or the Telecaster or the, you know, the BC Rich, the black heavy metal guitar I just played, uh, you will hear the difference, yeah. And I'm gonna do that right now, you know, play the same lick. Uh, using my guild first and this guitar amp and then the same setup 
and use the Telecaster and then the, the black heavy metal guitar and I'm pretty sure you hear the difference. <laughs> Telecaster. And the BC Rich. Here we go. So I'm pretty sure you noticed every guitar had a little, little bit of a different sound to it, you know. But uh, it's, as long as you play rock and roll, rockabilly, it will still sound rock and roll or rockabilly. You know? uh, when you play, something like that, you know, it won't sound rockabilly even though you use a 50s guitar, you know. Um, in the 60s, a lot of players used uh, 50s guitars because they were cheaper and uh, easy to get, you know. Um, but they didn't sound 50s at all. And a big part of, of course, was the amp setup. Um, because in the 60s, the amps developed so much, you know, they got much louder, they had the, the overdrive and um, reverb. So that changed the sound a lot. You know? But let's concentrate on the playing, because if you go back to the 1950s, you had um, such a variety of um, guitars they played. Yeah, if you think of uh, Gene Vincent, Cliff Gallup, he played the, the Gretsch Duo Jet, and the Cobb Perkins, Gibson, Gold Top, and the Switchmaster, and then he had Scotty Moore playing the ES-295, and uh, the L5 later on. Yeah, then you had um, Roland Jane's Sun Records played the Stratocaster, and Buddy Holly played the Stratocaster, but they sounded totally different, you know, because their playing was different. They played the same guitar pretty much, but uh, everybody can uh, tell, you know, this is Roland James or this is Buddy Holly. So, what does it make sound like rock a, like a rockabilly song? Yeah, um, I think it's the mixture between really country music and and blues. And from the countryside, you had lots of um, instrumentalists playing the along the melody of the singer, and you have that. And, and rockabilly too, especially in the early recordings. Yeah, uh, I give you some examples. side of course you get uh, the minor pentatonic which goes like this some major tones here the ninth or this one which would come out of the major scale yeah? the, the country the white scale so to speak yeah this is the, the ninth and the sixth and even the major third very often and then you combine uh, all of those and you get something like this add some fancy 
Hammer on pull offs. Something like that. Or. Here's another pull off lick in the key of G this time, and we're using the minor pentatonic. Yeah? And then we go to the major six, and then we're using, again, you know, the, that's the flat seven. And major third. Okay. Oh, let's move to another key, a key of B flat, and you get this famous intro. And we're using the minor pentatonic and uh, major six again, and the uh, Major third, yeah. And here's another thing that's uh, very common in rock and roll rockabilly: the the double stops. Yeah, you play two strings at once yeah, with some slides. I don't he hear that too often in other music, you know. Or uh, let's do, let's move to the key of A. Yeah, it's all uh, the G and the B string. And even here you can use the D and the G string. Another very uh, characteristic thing for rockabilly is the use of the open E string. Uh, especially in the key of E or even in the key of A, um, you can use the open E string together with a E here on the B string, fifth fret, and do some slides. Yeah, yeah, or you probably heard that one before. Or. And here's the lick I want to share with you uh, from Long Black Train by Conway Twitty. Uh, it goes like this. Yeah, and then it goes to the to the A. It's in the key of E, of course, and it's basically in the E7 with an open E string. Yeah, B here on the fourth fret G string. 3rd fret B string, the D and open E, and you do some slide. One more time. And then there comes some uh, hammer on action. Yeah, hammer on from 3 to 5, open E string, hammer on from 3 to 4 on the G string, and open B string. time sorry uh, also very important for your rockabilly playing is the shuffle feel and instead of going straight yeah, um, use a shuffle and also with the runs you're playing yeah, yeah don't go oh, I can't even even do it, you know. Uh, later on uh, in rock and roll, there's a lot of straight songs, but uh, rockably, it's usually just um, a swing feel or a shuffle feel to it. This is my main guitar. It's a 1958 Guild X175. It came originally with a Guild P90s, but when I bought it, there were some 70s humbuckers on there. So I replaced them with uh, Lindy Fralin P90s. I also put the Bixby on there. Yeah, that wasn't original. Um, I use flat one strings 11th 
and um, I use a pretty small flat pick, yeah, heavier, and also the thumb pick by Fred Kelly. I like them the best. My amp is a self-made GA70 with a tube tape echo in the back. That's built in. And I have the echo usually adjusted like this, the length yeah, of the echo. Um, but very often I play without echo, you know, especially if the room we play in has a lot of ambience. So when I play it sounds something like this. I would always suggest a smaller amp like 25, 30 watts uh, because this gives you also a, like a, a lower stage volume like they had back then and um, you can play more with the dynamics. Of course, you know, you have to have the right band for it, you know, when the, the drummer is very loud, then the vicious cycle of uh, loudness starts on stage. But um, sometimes I have to fly into gigs and uh, there's only a twin reverb or something like that uh, available. What I usually do is um, I take the, the bass on the treble all the way off, put the middle up in the presence to about like half or uh, three quarter and that usually gives me the sound I want. I don't use any effects, I plug straight into the amp it's got the built-in tape echo and that gives me enough effect. You know, I usually have the echo repeat on one you know, or two, not too many. And I would uh, suggest you do the same if you want to get an authentic sound. There are many people who will tell you you have to have an echo to, to get an authentic 50 style. And I think that, that is not entirely true because the, the first uh, rockabilly recordings by Carl Perkins, which in my opinion is the king of rockabilly, didn't have any echo in there, and even like That's a Right Mama by Scotty Moore and countless other rockabilly classics don't have any echo. Yeah? So as long as, again, as long as you play the right stuff, it will sound good, it will sound 50s or rockabilly. You don't ha have to use an echo, but of course it adds to the sound. The biggest advice I can give you is um, listen to the music, listen to the guitar players and uh, if you like something try to copy it and uh, if you copy it do it note by note just the way he's playing it because then you learn something new, uh, something you couldn't come up with yourself you know and when you have the solo down then you can make up your own version out of it you know but if you just uh, play the start of the solo and then you make up your own stuff you know and it, when it gets uncomfortable playing wise you know you just uh, fake it then you will never learn something new